All right, everyone. We're here today to change our front brake pads on a C250. Could also be the C300, C350 as well. So I've gone ahead and taken the wheel off already. And what we'll want to do first, take out the caliper bolts. There's one up top and one at the bottom. And you do that with a half millimeter, I'm sorry, half inch drive, as well as a 17 millimeter. So let me go and take that off. But one of the first things you want to do first is unscrew the brake fluid reservoir. reason why you want to do this because for later whenever you got to put the you got to push the piston back down into the caliper so that you can get the brake pads all the way into the rotor and uh, caliper assembly it'll push that fluid upwards one and you got the bottom one you got one that slides into the holder for the gliding pin and you got the top one and from that There's a brake sensor in there. And we could pull that out. And there's also uh you know, got a stick of screwdriver in here to kind of push the brake pads away from the rotor. And just pull clip out like this there's a bracket in there where it, how it holds in place Right up. Just like this. And you're gonna to wanna to place it right on top of the rotor. Go place it there right now. You'll see this, how it's hooked on. Slides through this little groove. Kind of goes in right in there. That, that's how you would take the old one out. And we do not have a knee sensor. So. The reason why I'm changing these because I did get an alert uh, to check my disc brake, uh, to check my brake pads. The sensor lets you know whenever you got some brake wear in the brake pads. So you take that out and then you can just 
pull this. It comes out like that. There's one on the other side as well. So you got two of them. You know what you want to do? You want to make sure that you order the right ones because there's there's uh, brake pads. That have this notch on the end. Then there's also some that have hook notches at the very end. And you don't want to learn that while you're changing the brakes. So I went to uh, uh, a place to go buy these ones that I actually needed. The ones like this. So next thing I'm gonna do is a clean. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the rotors. All right, the next thing I do to clean the rotors and some of the old disc pads, disc brakes on there, yeah, I use a wire wheel and I just kind of clean this up. And you can also use some sandpaper, just anything to kind of clean all the old residue that's currently in there. And I'll take this wire brush, clean this. If you're not provided with new ones. Do some brake cleaner. Get that at Lowe's. I mean, uh, Home Auto Zone, O'Reilly's. Kind of clean, clean up all that brake, previous brake residue that you had on here. Just make sure you put something under it because uh, it is going to leak and I use it to absorb uh, the brake cleaner. You'll want to take the top one out also. Then you also want to get some of this copper at the very back of it. Kind of get a piston a little bit. Once again, just put everything in here. See everyone, here are the old brake pads, the new ones that I got originally had hooks and they just weren't the right ones so I just want to let everyone be aware and your new ones would look like this, if you match them up against each other, it would be the same exact thing. So I just want to let you know just in case you're doing this for the first time, you will save a lot of time. The sword actually closed when I was able to try to go get the correct one, so I want to keep that in mind. All right, next thing I want to do, I want to grease the guide pins, and what I use it's called Ceramic Glide. Uh, it just helps the uh, performance of the brakes and uh, prevent vibration and squeal noise. apply this you just take this pin here there's a rubber bushing and make sure you take a look at the bushings make sure there's no liquid coming out or that could be some kind of problem but I apply some more grease And I just insert it back in here. Get that 
rubber seal to pack go pack go back over the nut that's back there just kind of squeeze it make sure it glides really easy that's the bottom one i'm gonna do the top one as well okay it's right here just pull the plastic tubing away and just inspecting it it uh, seems to be fine there's no nothing coming out of it so i'll get some grease and put it on this That's good. And what I do next, I want to be able to push this piston all the way back till you get to the very back. It allows you maximum space for your brake pads. If you take a look at your brake pad, here's your old. This is the new brake pad. See how much brake brake I have left compared to the old one. And that's why my sensor was going off. I mean, there's a very big difference if you take a look on the thickness so so what i usually do since i don't have a piston pusher i can put my old brake pad in here and i take a big c-clamp mechanic and he's late to work again. All right, here's how you want to set up the C-clamp. I got a six inch C-clamp. I have a brake, old brake pad against the piston. And what I'm gonna do is slowly push on this till it's flat. And the reason why we unscrew the fluid cylinder reservoir earlier is because once you push this, uh, the liquids start going up on the cylinder and you don't want it to be closed. What this allows you to do, have a lot of room for both of the brake pads because they're a lot thicker. Thicker. If you take a look over here. The level is going up. And you could take some out, but I guess uh, mine was kind of low. So I'm just gonna add more brake fluid later so I didn't have to take any ounces out. So let's continue this until that back part is flat. See the piston? Until it's flush. there see how that piston's flat now 
now we'll be able to get the brake pads in here with no problem. So once you get all the way back there, just release it. And there it is. So, this is our homeboy Slim Nady. Hey. He's gonna be pulling some dents out of his car later. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe we can use a seat pad. <laughs> so the next thing you wanna do, go on and reach the back of these. This is the brake shim right here. Just a, I got some grease that was included, but I also did buy some. Ceramic glide. You want to make sure you put it on the back of these. So I'll do that next. Well, let's go ahead and do this. I took these clips off. So let's go and put these back in. When I cleaned everything. And then they'll just snap in place. They're kind of like runners where they're not just for the brakes are. Sensor right here. Yeah, and that's the sensor. Oh, it's kind of cold. Feels good. So you just clip those down real good. Push up. That way the brake notches will slide and between those. Show me your jack stand. No. I guess, uh. Alright, so put some of this <laughs> ceramic glide or any kind of lubricant on here. We're gonna put the sensor back. So here I do have a new sensor. What's that? I'll bring that over. We'll install this. And remember, there's only one, I guess, with a hole in it. So, put this on the other side. So, put this one on this side. So, that goes in there. Yeah, under the workbench. So that goes in there, and then the sensor. This is the sensor. Go right in here. So the sensor's gonna go in like this. And there's a hole in the brake where you put the sensor so it knows. And that's how you put the sensor in. And the sensor will go through here, back through here and to a uh, port. You gotta slide this into the port here that it connects to. It's the sensor so it knows. Let me screw it. 
unscrew the screw, so it's gonna hold in place real quick. And here's where the sensor goes. And you just push it in until it clicks. You're set to go. And put this other one back in. Put the back. After this, I'll torque them to 18 pounds per feet, which is also 218 inches. So let me go ahead and time that up. I've got some netty over here. He's got to wash his whip. So go ahead and get your torque wrench. Work it up. You have to hold on the one side with a 17 millimeter. Oh yeah, one thing I did forget to do, I'll go ahead and redo it. After this video, I'll put on this side, I forgot to put anti-seize uh, thermal lock on it. So, let's make sure you put that on as well. I'm going to do it to the other side real quick. And that's what it looks like. And you want to torque that down as well. You just do it until you hear that noise. And you click it in place. Let me get some black, some blue. I'm gonna throw it in here.
Don't forget, you need the 17 millimeter on the other side. Blue lock thread. There you go. Well, next thing you need to do, you have to go ahead and pump your brakes a few times. Still gonna leave this loose. Just pop the brake slowly until the Pedal starts getting nice and firm. And once it gets nice and firm, you can go ahead and put the cap back on. As you can tell, the fluid has gone back to its original state. Now we'll have to add some more fluid in there. And that is the installation of the front brake rotors.